Hi, in this lecture, we'll go through Docker volumes. Now, what happens when we remove the container or the container gets restarted? What happens to the data? So the data is not persisted and it's limited to the container's scope. So when the container is restarted or it is stopped and removed, so the data within the container also gets lost. And when we try to spin a new container, it will be a fresh container with a fresh state. But we don't want that. In most of the scenarios, we want our data to be persisted. So in order to persist the data, maybe it's a database or a stateful application that we need the data. So we use Docker volumes. So let's see how to create a Docker volume or how volumes in general work within Docker. So first, let's uh, use docker run command, docker run hyphen it hyphen v. So hyphen v will be the command to specify the docker volume. Now we'll give a host path, which will be slash home. And then we specify the path within the container that we want to mount to the host file system. Maybe slash temp of busy box container. So it is pulling the latest image. It has pulled the latest image and we are inside the busy box shell. So let's go to the temp directory. Let's create a file called test. We can see the file is there. Now let's exit it. Now when we have exited, Docker itself will persist the data inside the host path that we have given and whatever is there in the host path will also be visible in the container. So let's go to slash home, let's do ls and we can see test file has already been created over there. Now what happens is, this is called host mounting inside the Docker container. Next portion is Docker volumes itself. So these are whatever I have shown you right now. This is the host path and these are managed, uh, not managed by Docker. Now let's create another volume. And this time we just give a volume name. And we mount another directory called user share of busybox container. Now what happens is, I again come inside the busybox shell. And if I go here, I don't have anything, let's do touch demo. I have a file. Let's exit the container. Now Docker will automatically create a volume named demo and this volume will be managed by Docker. So let's clear the screen. In order to view the volumes, you can do Docker volume ls. You can see the demo is already created. So this is called a named volumes. Now let's see where it is created. Now var lib docker volumes. And you can see demo is there. If I go to demo, I go to data. I see the demo file is already listed over here. So this is how Docker creates volume. Now, if we do not give anything in the Docker run command with hyphen V and we just specify the path that we actually want to get mounted inside the container. So we just give, let's give another path, slash home of busy box. Let's go to slash home, ls, we don't have anything. Let's do a touch, test two. We have this, let's exit it. Now what happens is Docker will automatically create a volume with a random hash. So if we do Docker volume ls, we can see it is an anonymous volume that Docker has already created. So the data is still getting persisted but it is an anonymous volume because it is a randomly generated hash that it has created the volume name with. If we again go to where lib docker volumes and we can see 
we have demo folder as well as the randomly generated new anonymous volume. So this is how we can create Docker volumes and this is how we can persist data on the host file system or a volume managed by Docker. Usually the named volumes are most widely used. That's it for this lecture. Thank you.